Well, I want to thank everybody for coming out today, and uh, I want to thank Ms. Carla Lindley for joining us today. Thank you. Jay Scott, who is a noted historian of horror movies. Where did you live and what sort of house did you live in? Was it fancy or small or what? Oh, it was just a little Hollywood bungalow. Well, when I was growing up, it was at Universal. Oh, on the lot? The bungalow was actually right on the Oh, I, I lived there oh, for 14 fun. years. Wow. And I came out in 1921 and we moved right on the Universal lot. I was just 11 and um, everything was just fairyland to me. And uh, so I spent the rest 14 years at Universal. Do you remember the Hollywood Land sign going? Oh, you yes. Remember when it first went up there? Yes. What did people think of it? They loved it. I mean, it was, it was wonderful. I mean, what would Hollywood be without it? Uh, <laughs> During the 30s, uh, Carl Lindley was making all these movies. He was very involved with uh, getting people out of uh, Nazi Germany. Oh, yes. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes. My uncle, he dedicated that the last half of his life really to rescuing the Jews from the terrible conditions in Germany. I think that he was able to rescue about 400. He was giving each of them $10,000. Our NRE opposition is attracting tremendous attention on the other side. The people that I have met from all over Europe have an immense amount of confidence in our president, as far as Universal is concerned, it is costing us a lot of money, perhaps a million dollars a year. But I, for one, am glad to spend a million if it helps to bring back prosperity to this country. He saved all these people's lives, so he did a wonderful, wonderful thing. Do you remember what your first job was? Well, the first job was uh, Phantom of the Opera. I uh, was fortunate enough to be able to be the ballerina in uh, Phantom of the Opera, which was an absolute unbelievable accomplishment for someone 16 years old. With Phantom of the Opera, you were very secretive about his makeup, but you got to see that makeup too. It was just frightening, and actually, uh, when Mary Philbin demasked him, it was reported that she fainted. Oh. It's stage 28 at Universal. 28. It's the oldest working soundstage in the world. Yes, and it's sort of a shrine now. It's an amazing story. And that's why well, somebody wrote it. a book out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm let's talk, let's it's, talk it's, about it's, this book. Carla, why is the book called Among the Rugged Peaks? Well, it just so happened that those were the first lines, opening lines, of Dracula. Oh. Among okay. the rugged peaks that frown down upon the Borgo Pass are found crumbling castles of a bygone age. Those are the immortal lines from Dracula. <laughs> You're a passenger in the coach and you have a little a uh, travel brochure that says, yes. Welcome to Transylvania. <laughs> <laughs> and inside? Inside was the dialogue among the rugged peaks. <laughs> and I, I just read from, from the script, and that so, was it. So the rehearsal is the final take. <laughs> <laughs> this funny little movie, Dracula, which Universal took a chance on, and didn't know what it was going to do. Well, it saved the studio from bankruptcy. This was the worst year of the Great Depression, and they really kind of bet the farm on it. Yeah. Okay. They were extremely successful, and still are today, 70 years or more in the future. So uh, I'm sure my uncle is very happy about that, wherever he is now. <laughs> I worked in all the different studios. 
I think it was on Pale. It was uh, Frank Sinatra's first movie. Yeah. yeah. So tell me about how you know Carla Limley. I've been dying to come see her show because, I mean, she has a lifetime experience in Hollywood. First words in Dracula in 1931 is just so incredible. And how does that make you feel, Carla, to have so many fans today? Well, I tell you, um, I couldn't have felt better, you know, more honored. They're wonderful.